Hope everyone is having a great Saturday. Uh, it's cold our way. Very cold. Shalom, you two. Shalom, shalom. We just, uh, let, as I said, waiting for everyone to come on. I'll text some people that said they wanted to get on and let them know that we're on. Hi, Dee Dee. Hey, Dee Dee. How you doing, my sister? Glad to see you joined us. <laughs> it's a new word Shalom. translation that the Jehovah Witness used. I'm okay. Hope all is going well. Pastor hey, White. Hey, Pastor White, my friend. <laughs> God bless you, God my bless brother. you. You pray for us. Yes. <laughs> God bless you, Ricky. How you doing, Ricky? <laughs> Miss you too, Dee Dee. Shalom, shalom. We're really looking forward to having a, a beautiful discussion uh, today. You know, we just uh, thank our Heavenly Father for what he has given us. So we're looking to have a, a beautiful time. Amen, amen. And just want you to join right on in there with us. And, uh, you know, throw some, yeah, there you go. Thumbs up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Show us some love. <laughs> I hope everybody out there is keeping warm. That's up our way because we know it is it's brutally cold out there. Hey, Keith, cuz. Hey, what's up, cousin? <laughs> God bless you, my brother. Good to see you. <laughs> Love you, man. Oh, Ken. Ken, God bless Hi, you. Ken. God bless you, brother Fulton. Shalom to you, man. All right, we got five o'clock, according to my Fitbit. <laughs> So I guess we can go ahead and, and get started. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's have a, a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. We honor you this evening. We thank you for this Bible study that we're giving. And Father, though they hear my voice, I pray and ask them to allow them to hear your words, that myself will be decreased and you will be increased. We ask that you would speak through both of us and to enlighten us, Father, that we can walk in the attributes and calling that you have laid before us and set before us. Again, it's in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So oh, so Key says colder than a polar a polar bear than toenails. I so, okay, <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Uh, and Pastor White said he's in a barber chair. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that shape up. All right, all right. Well, um I quickly just want to touch bases on what we discussed last Saturday. Um in the first Bible study that we did. And we talked about um, study to show thyself approved. And it came from the book of Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, verse 15, where uh, it says, uh, study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, hey, rightly dividing the word of truth. God bless your brother, Sean. Man, I start preacher. Good to see you. <laughs> so um, when we rightly divert, divide the word of truth, that means that we go in depth, that we understand what the scriptures are saying to us. And um, when we go in depth, we research. We uh, go back to its original language, which is Hebrew. So uh, even though I can't read Hebrew, and some of you probably cannot, and those of you who can, God bless you, awesome. You know, it's awesome. But what we do is get a translation Hebrew from Greek. the uh, the uh, Hebrew uh, the Old scriptures. Testament, which is the, for the New. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we want to make sure that we get that correct 
understanding of what the scripture says. So that's what we talked about last uh, Saturday. Now, I will be... Um, God bless you too, Minister Sean. Thank you for uh, joining us. God bless you. Yes, sir. I will be um, referring back to 2 Timothy uh, again on every post that we do because we want to make sure that we do study the scriptures to show thyself approved. Now, um, what I prayed about and um, for discussion on today Let's go to uh, the scripture before I give you what we're going to talk about. The scripture, uh, this is King James Version. I'm going to read a couple different versions here. And, um, all right, we'll talk to you later, Pastor White. All Thanks right. for joining in and stopping by. All right, God bless you. Um, <laughs> this is King James Version, Exodus, third chapter, verses 12 through 15. And it reads like this. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me. What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Oh, that's Brother Raymond. All right. God bless you. God bless you, brother. I haven't saw you in a while. <laughs> and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you. Verse 15. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say Hello. unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. Hi, Tiffany. And this shall be my, or this is my memorial unto all generations. Now, here is the question which brings us to our study. What is his name? What is his name? Now, we see here in verse 15, again, this is the King James Version. It says, verse 15, And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. First thing I want to point out, there is no name there, only a title. There's no name. Let's go to the New International. New International Version. And I'm just going to read verse 15. I'm not going to read all the verses. Verse 15. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me, from generation to generation. Again, there's no name, only a title. Let's go to one more. Let's go to the American Standard Version. Verse 15. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, Jehovah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, 
And this is my memorial unto all generations. God bless you, Brother Tom. Good to see you, my brother. Hadn't seen you in a while. Now, there is a name here, and that name here is Jehovah. But still, is not his name. Let us go to the book that has his name, the Bible. And that particular Bible is the New Living Translation. Verse 15 reads, God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. There is his name, Yahweh, Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E Why is this his name? The first thing again that I said back in the first Bible study last week, this book, these scriptures are Hebrew. They're Hebrew scriptures. So we have to go back to the Hebrew language to understand who was speaking, what the name was, what they were saying. We got to go back. This is how you study the word of, of God. This is how you study the scriptures. Now, uh, in this scripture, in the, these verses, we find here that God is talking to Moses. We know the story of Moses and how he went up on uh, the mountain because he saw the burning bush, but the bush was not being consumed by the fire. And as he uh, got close to the bush, the Lord spoke to him from the bush and said, take off thy sandals up from thy feet for you're standing on holy ground. So when he began to have this conversation with the father and Yahweh was telling him that he's gonna send him into Israel uh, into Egypt, I'm sorry, to free his children, the Israelites, because he heard their cry. And he said, Moses said, well, who am I going to say sent me? How am I are they going to know that it was you? And he said, tell them, I am that I am. I shall be who I be, or I will be who I am. And he said, this is I my name. Say. He said, my name is Yahweh. Tell the people, Yahweh Baby. has sent you. This is my name. God bless your niece and nephew. He said, this is my name, Yahweh. And this is my name for eternity, for all generations. Hi, Michael. Now, Thank again, you for joining. This is in the New Living Translation. King James did not give a name. They gave a title. The uh, New International Version did not give a name. It gave a title. The New American Standard did not give a name. It gave a title. The titles that these Bibles had given is God. It doesn't give the name. How, so how can they say, and, 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 and I'm just making a, a plain point here. How can they say that this is his name and he said, this is my name for all uh, eternity, for all generations. And there was no name given, just a title. And the title was God. But here in the New Living Translation, we are given the name Yahweh. Again, the Bible is Hebrew. The writings were original Hebrew. And it was translated. It was um, uh, not only translated, but um, it was... Um, inspired writings, you know, that, that was written by the people of the Bible and translated for us to read. Now, the uh, thing that, I, another thing I, I want to point out is this. Why? Why did God identify himself to Moses as the God of your father? the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Why did he identify himself like that? 
I'll tell you why. He had to let Moses know, along with the children of Israel, that he was the self-existing one, the true, living, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God. Because Egypt had numerous gods. And so did the other people around them, and they picked up those habits. And as the scriptures say, they went whoring after other gods. So they had learned the names of all these other gods. So Moses said, well, who am I going to tell you? Which God is it? Because God is a title. And as he just stated, as Pastor Wilson stated, they had many gods over there that they worshipped. They had Molech. They had Baal. They had uh, Asherah. They had all these different gods over there. Uh, Egypt had Amun-Ra. So and they had names. It's yes. like our God, who we serve and worship, has a name. That's why Moses said, "Well, who am I to to tell which God?" That's basically what he was saying. What is your name? Right. Who should I tell them which one? So he said, "Let them know that is it's, it's the God of their fathers." They knew who the God of their father was. They knew yes. that he was Yahweh. He said, "The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob." But really, it was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's his name, Yahweh. And uh, now, now watch this. These are just some of the gods that Egypt had. Osiris, Isis, Horus, Hapamun, Tarek, Nu. Now those gods right there were gods of the uh, river Nile. They were the water gods. Then you have a god called Het. H-E-K-T, which is God is of the land. Then you have Geb, G-E-B, the great God of the earth. Amon Ra. Mm -hmm. You all know that, that name. Some of you are familiar with that name. Amon Ra, the king of the gods. Apis, the bull god. And Hathor, the cowhead god. Goddess of the deserts. Now, I never heard of this one, but Bubastis, B-U-B-A-S-T-I-S. And this God is... God bless you, Demetrius. How are you cat. doing, Brother Shalom? Bubastis is the cat goddess of love. And they had many more goddesses and gods. So just like these many gods had given names... Mm -hmm who were, uh, that were given these names by those who created them, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, had a given name, one given to us by him, he himself, and that name is Yahweh. So we don't have to make him up. <laughs> we don't have to create a God for this and a God for that. He was here in the beginning. That's what it tells us in Genesis. Yes. That he was here before anything else was. He is the creator of all things. Did you tell him I am who I am, the self-existing one? Yes. Yes. He. That's what he said. I am who I am. And, and, and that's, that's what he means by I am the self-existing one, the, the one and true living, all-knowing, all-powerful God. Now, to go a little further on this, let me shed a little more light. Every Sunday, watch this, every Sunday, a great majority of us, if not all of us, speak a Hebraic or Hebrew word. Some of us may, may speak that word a little more frequent than Sundays only. But that Hebrew word is hallelujah. And it means praise Yah or God. Okay. Try to make it plain and keep it simple. Praise Yah or God. I had to make me some notes so I could stay on track because I think I got a little off track last uh, Saturday. It gets good like that, though. Now, because of interpretation and not translation, we say that hallelujah means 
Praise the Lord, all ye people. Why was Yah, God, removed from what he rightly deserves, which is praise? So now you may be thinking, what does he mean God was removed? I'm getting ready to explain it to you. This is how God was removed, or Yah was removed. The letter in the, the word hallelujah, the spelling is incorrect, first of all, because the first letter of the last three letters is not a J. Not in the original. Okay. In the original, that's right, in the original spelling of the word, the first letter of the last three is not a J. There was no J back then. The letter J didn't come about until the 16th, 17th century. And it is a result of experimenting with the letter I. So let me pause there. When... The, the uh, Greeks began to translate, which uh, is the New Testament. When they began to translate from the Hebrew writing, they uh, used the word Jesus in place of Jesus's name. And I'll talk about that a little later if I have a little time. They, uh, the, what they did was, though, instead of having a J, they used an I. And it was pronounced Jesus. When the experimental letter came along, which is J, it went from Jesus to Jesus. And that's what we use today. Jesus. Now, this J is not accurate at all. It's not even scriptural because it came so far later down the road. It's not scriptural. And to even use it in a Hebrew word, well, it just ain't right. Now, the correct spelling of the word hallelujah, that J would be a why. When we praise in church and we say hallelujah, what we're saying is praise Yah, praise God, praise who? Yahweh. That's what we're saying. Praise Yahweh. Why? Because Yahweh is his name. To so, uh, interject there so you all can know mm, the reason mm. why we came about with in the uh, Old Testament where you see capital G, capital, I mean, I'm sorry, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, mm -hmm. and capital G, capital O, capital D. When you see those, those words, Lord and God and all in cap, that is actually Yahweh. And what happened was at some particular time, the uh, Jews felt like his name was too holy to be uttered. So yes. they felt like, and they took it upon themselves, well, we're not going to pronounce his name. Now, we, there is uh, in their uh, the, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls that they found in the Kumbhra mm -hmm. Cave, it still has his name Yahweh on there. Yes, it they does. They still had his name in scripture. They just didn't utter it. And even in some of their synagogues, they would say Hashim, mm -hmm. which is um, the name. So they have it. So the question is, if they had it, in there when they were translating why didn't they put it in there when they were translating if it's in there it's in there but they don't say it so when we had the people translating back then they substituted his name so yes. that's how it came about where you see lord and god in all caps in the old testament because really in the uh hebraic scriptures that they found the the old from the ones they found in the dead sea they which they which are in the dead sea scroll it's actually his given name, Yahweh, just like yes, all those is. other gods over there during that time had a name. He had a name as well, and it's Yahweh. And sometimes they shorten it and say, Yah. Yes, yes. So uh, God bless you, Brittany. 
Glad you can join us, sweetheart. Um, you know, we, we really have to understand who it is that we serve. Now, let, let me ask a question, and I don't mean to be belittling at all. Please don't misunderstand this. But did you know his name? Did you know the name of the God that you serve before this? Did you know his name was Yahweh? And if you did know that, how often do you call him by his name? Instead of saying, I love God, I give honor to God, I praise God, I thank God. How about saying his name? Call him for who he is. Call him by his name. You don't want anyone to call you something else that's not your name. That's a title. You know, exactly, a title. All right, what what would be a title for us? Man? Boy. Boy. And, and we do okay. that. And what came to me was, we. I, I don't know the president on a, um, a personal basis. So we will refer to him as CODIS or Mr. President mm -hmm. or President Obama because I don't know him on that personal level as his wife, his mother-in-law, and, you know, his close relatives and friends that may call him Barry, his given name. We have to call him by we, his title, you know, out of respect. Yes. I don't have that yes. relationship to do that. But because I have a relationship with God, I can call him by his personal name because I have yes. a personal relationship with him. I know him on a personal basis. Yes. So I can call yes. him by his personal name. Like I call my husband by his personal name because I have a relationship with him. That's I right. have a relationship with Tuesday. I can call her Tuesday. Yes. Because I know her on a personal basis versus saying Miss Wilson. So okay. to speak. Mm -hmm. Or the so, lady. Right. We all have titles. I have titles. We all wear different hats. I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. I'm a wife. These are all titles. Yes. And we have a lot of titles in the Bible. And there's nothing wrong with those titles because they describe the character of God. So it helps us to understand his character and right. who he is. But he has a given name. And if you said, well, this is my personal take on it. Mm -hmm. What I feel. Since I said I have a personal relationship with God, as the Bible says, the God of Abraham, yes. the God of yes. Isaac, yes. the God of Jacob. Yes. I can call him by his name, Yahweh, because I have that relationship with him, and I do. And if you have a personal relationship with him, you know, the time that you suck and talk with him, call him by his personal name. Make it personal. And, and that's what we're supposed to do. This, uh, uh, when you have a relationship with the Father, when you have that relationship with Him, it's personal. I have a personal relationship with my wife here. I call her my angel. This is my angel, my, the love of my life. I have a personal relationship with her. So just like I call her sometimes, hey, baby. Hey, Angel. Hey, Brenda. She knows I'm referring to her. I'm calling her. But when we're talking about our Father, the Creator of all things, the uh, 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 all-knowing, all-existing uh, God, the true living, when we're talking about Him, He wants us to call Him by His name. So call Him Yahweh. That's His name. Again, it's in the New Living Translation. His name is there, Yahweh. The other Bibles I named, uh, King James, the American Standard, the uh, NAS, they, they don't have his name there. And for those it's that have title. just joined, it is in the, uh, we was talking about his name and what his name is when, when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? It's in the original Bible, the Hebraic Bible, in the uh, original Hebrew scripture. His name is actually there, Yahweh. It's in there. But when they translate it at that particular time, for whatever reason, they just substituted Lord and God in all caps, mm -hmm. his title versus his name. But he has a name, and he gave us that name, and his name is Yahweh. Now, you're probably saying, well, why did they substitute his name? 
Why did they take his name out of the Bible? And if you ask that question, good question, because I asked the same thing. Why? Well, this is uh, something that I like to read, and uh, you can find it also on Google if you Google it. His name is Elijah. It was at Elijah.com. E L I Y A H dot com. And it's entitled, Why Do We Have the Lord in Our Bibles Rather Than Yahweh? And here's what he said This is a very common question. It all began with a Jewish tradition called the Ineffable Name Doctrine. Jews, for various reasons, started to. Sorry about that. Okay. It says, um, Jews, for various reasons, started to substitute his name with the Hebrew title Adonai. Adonai is the Hebrew word for Lord. This information can be easily verified in many Bible dictionaries and various encyclopedias. For instance, the Encyclopedia Britannica. Encyclopedia Britannica. Watch this. States. Yahweh, the God of the Israelites. I really don't need to say any more, do I? <laughs> but watch this. His name being revealed to Moses as four Hebrew consonants. Y-H-W-H. And we've all seen that. Called the Tetragrammaton. Mm -hmm. After the exile, which took place in 6th century B.C., and especially from the 3rd century B.C. on, Jews ceased to use the name Yahweh for two reasons. As Judaism became a universal religion through its proselytizing in the Greco-Roman world, the more common now Elohim, meaning God, tended to replace Yahweh to demonstrate the universal sovereignty of Israel's God all over others. At the same time, the divine name was increasingly regarded as too sacred to be uttered. It was thus replaced vocally in the synagogue ritual by the Hebrew word Adonai, again meaning my Lord or Lord, which was translated as Kyrios, Lord, in the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Old Testament. We see in the above quote that Jews started to vocally replace the name Yahweh with Adonai for two reasons. One, it was beginning to be believed that his name was too sacred to be uttered. And two, they preferred to simply call him Elohim rather than Yahweh to demonstrate to the world that he is the only true Elohim. While on the surface, these reasons may seem honorable. They are very unscriptural. Did you hear that? They're very unscriptural. They were and are attempts to improve on Yahweh's already perfect ways. If Yahweh really wanted a substitute, why would he have placed his name there to begin with? Though, Scripture says to follow Yahweh rather than man. We find that nearly 7,000 times the most important name of all is replaced with another word that man has chosen. So it's saying that his name in Scripture, 7,000 7, times, it has been replaced with another name. One that was chosen by man. And to finish up what he says here in this paragraph, this tradition was not practiced by the Messiah or the apostles, but it was adopted by some Christians during the early half of the second century, CE slash AD. By the fourth century, 
This practice was well established and widely practiced. Jerome, a 4th century church father who authored the Latin Vulgate version, substituted the name Yahweh throughout with the Latin word Dominus, meaning Lord. The tradition of replacing Yahweh's name with the Lord continues to this day. Most English translations substitute the name Yahweh with the Lord, and translations into other languages will also commonly choose a title meaning Lord in their own language. More information on this can be found in the preface of many modern Bibles. So Facebook, tell me, listening to all of this and to know that it was man that changed his name and that originally the original uh, Hebrews actually called him by his given name, Yahweh, and that probably if we went and sat with them back during that time and we just said God, they, they would probably look at us strange and like, well, what God? Because he had a name. So who, they would probably ask us, what God are you referring to? Now, to us, it, it, it's, it's probably the opposite. To say Yahweh seems strange to us because we've been so accustomed to referring to him by his titles. Elohim, God, Lord. El but but his, he had a given name that they yes. used. And for whatever purpose, whatever reason, my husband just read to you all, they felt. Not that God told them, but they felt. Oh, his name is too holy to utter. They made that decision, not yes. God. And we know that there is a scripture in the Bible that says, don't add to and don't take away. It's in the old and it is in the new yes, in Revelation, is. which is talking about the book of Revelation. So we've been duped, so to speak. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. My husband didn't bring this up, but what we were talking about this throughout the week, and he was talking about a scripture that's in the book of Revelation that says that I believe it was the book of Revelation, wasn't it? That the whole world would be, um, what was that scripture you were talking about? About Satan deceived, the oh, whole deceived. world would yes. be deceived. Now, yeah. there's a little deception there, a little bit because. We don't have his given name, but yet we know who we're talking about, so to speak. But one man, he, he he's a preacher, and he made a comment, and, and it, it really is valid. And he refers to God by his given name, Yahweh, and Jesus by his given name that he was called by when he walked the earth because it was not Jesus. I know this is hard for us Christians in today's time to digest that, but they didn't refer to him as Jesus. His name was Yeshua, and that's what he went by. So we've been kind of duped a little bit, but that preacher said when people said, praise God, I say, well, what God are you talking about? Because there are many gods. He said, we got to have so many religions out there. Now you got people. Uh, I don't want to really offend people. Get, you know, people get offended about their religion. And, you know, I want to be respected of all religion because I want people to respect the fact that I serve the true and living God of the Bible. But he mentioned in his um, YouTube video <laughs> How do you have the God Allah and, you know, people worshiping, you know, um, some of them may still be worshiping Baal over there. You know, you have Baal Buddha God, and yes. all these other God, Krishna. And so he said, well, when you say wow. God to me, what God are you talking about? Because we have so many gods out there. So that's yes. why he said he now refers to God by his given name, which is uh, Yahweh. Yes. And, and now uh, also... If, uh, as, as the, this guy here, um, Elijah, uh, say it, if God's name is too sacred to utter, why did he tell it to Moses? Why did he tell Moses, this is my name? Watch this. Watch this. Not only did Moses know the name of God, which is Yahweh, but so did Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because he said in the scripture, talking to Moses, tell Israel, the Israelites, the God of their father, and said, Yahweh, he said, this is my name. This is my name. So if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew his name, it was given to them. 
and they called on him and served him. And the way he blessed them, even speaking to Jacob and changing his name to Israel. Hello. And the people that Moses was sent to rescue Israel. He said, this is my name. Go rescue my people. So his name is Yahweh. Now, I pulled up the scripture that my wife was just talking about. It's Revelation 12th chapter, verse 9. And it reads, in the King James Version, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, she was talking about the particular part that says here, which deceiveth the whole world. How does he deceive the whole world? In many fashions. So, he is the father of lies. Scripture tells us that. He's the father of lies. And those people who lie are his children. Scripture says that they're his children. But what Satan does, he's good at what he does because he can deceive so many people. And the scripture says he deceived the whole world. How does he see? He deceived them. Mm -hmm. One of the things of deception would be to take out the name of the God that we serve, Yahweh, and replace it with other names. So Facebook, how, how do you feel about this? I know some of you probably know this. Uh, my brother Albert down there from Mississippi. Hey Albert, representing Mississippi, my hometown. How you doing? Brother I'm Jaree Ranger, Eddie Turner, <laughs> Sister Pamela Ruff, and God bless you all. You all tell us your take and your feeling on this. Were you all aware of this? I know a lot of people are aware of this uh, because we've talked with some people and they was like, yes, I'm aware of that. I've studied that and, and I know that it's, it's good. So were you all aware of this, that his name was substituted and taken out, even though it's in the uh, the, the scrolls that they found in the Dead Sea, of the, in, the, in the Qumran Caves? It's still in there. We saw a copy of it, and they say it's still in there, and it's still in the Hebrew uh, text. They just don't utter his name. So how do you all feel about that, knowing this? Did you tell us if you knew this already, or is this news to you? We want to know your thoughts and if this is news to you. Now, see, again, the uh, scripture tells us, Second Timothy, I told you I was going to keep bringing this up. Study to show thyself approved. Second Timothy, second chapter, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you study and go into in depth of the word and grasp what the word is saying, then you would understand that what we're saying is fact, is truth. Now, some of you probably saying, oh, so, uh, they, they uh, doing that Hebrew stuff. Y'all doing that Sabbath thing. And uh, no, no, no. Don't get us confused as, as some of us, some, what, what's that saying? Don't, don't get us twisted. We're not. The thing is, we are trying to find out. We're finding out. I'm not going to say try. We're finding out who Yahweh is. We're finding out exactly what it is that he wants us to do. We're learning and finding out what did Yeshua teach us. What was it he was teaching? What was it he was saying? How do they want us to live? What God. is it? What is it that we must do in order 
to make it into his kingdom. Because his scripture says, uh, talking about the pathway to hell and to heaven, the road leading to hell is wide and many go that way. But the road to eternal life to heaven is narrow and few find it. So we want to make sure, we want to know that what we're doing, what we're preaching, what we're teaching is the word of Yahweh. I do pray that it's clear what's being said. His name is not God. That's the title. That's his title. His name is not Jehovah. Because there was no J in the Hebrew alphabet. It didn't come about until the 16th, 17th century. That was for us Americans. Hmm? It came about. Yes. Yes, it was for us Americans. It changed. So the, the Bible goes... Through It went through not just translations, but interpretations. And they, the Jews, felt that they needed to stop using Yahweh's name because it was too sacred to utter. And they replaced it with Adonai, with Elohim, with Lord. The scripture does say, do not take away, do not add to or take away from this Bible, from this book. It says it in Revelation and it says it in Deuteronomy and there's a couple other books that it says in. Do not add to, do not take away. You ever played the, the word game where you sit in a circle with a bunch of people and somebody start off with uh, uh, like a uh, sentence and you're supposed to tell what they said going around in circles. And then when it gets to the last person, that last person is supposed to, to say what was said or what they thought was said. And it'd be so far off <laughs> than what it was when it started. That's just like the scriptures hate to say it but it's true we have come so far from the original writings that all we have now instead of translations or interpretations scary thought but not all is lost because he told us study to show thyself approved so go do your research. Be like the Bereans. Search the scriptures. And see if what is being said, what is being taught, what is being preached is truth. All right. It's a quarter till. And I know that we have an engagement today, this evening. Um, I did say that I was also going to kind of touch on the name of Jesus. Okay. And uh, quickly, you know, and I'll come back over this. I'll uh, teach on this prayerfully next uh, Sabbath, next Saturday. His name. As you heard me uh, pray. This evening, I called Yahweh and I said in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that is Jesus' given name. Mm -hmm. His name is Yeshua. And there's a lot of dispute going on. Online, Google, that's not his name. His name is Jehovah. His name is Jesus. His Name is Yahoshua. I even saw uh, 
Yashaya, but you know what? <laughs> I'm I'm not going to get off into who's right, who's wrong. But I tell you, through studying, what I come to learn is, remember when Gabriel come to uh, Miriam, which was Mary, and said to her that thou has found favor in the sight of Yahweh. He said to her that you shall have a son. Now in the King James Version, what we're familiar with is, he said, you shall call him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. How they got Emmanuel or got God with us out of Emmanuel, I have no clue. But if it means God with us and Yah, is Hebrew for God. Wouldn't it make sense that his name would have Yah in it? Now, it said also that he will be the savior of the world. So if he is savior and his name has God in it, Guess what Yahshua means? God, our salvation. That's what his name means. Yahshua means God, our salvation. So, with that said, Yahshua HaMashiach, meaning Yeshua the Messiah. That's his name, Yeshua. And he is the anointed one, also known as the Christ. So we need to call our God by name, Yahweh. And when we call upon the Son, Yahshua, they truly know. Now, people, I heard them say, well, they know who I mean. They know who I'm, I'm talking about. And you know what? I'm not going to condemn you. I will not. I will not. Because scripture does say that God knows our heart. He says that. But here's my point. If you know what his name is instead of calling him by his title try calling him by his name because you don't want anyone to call you male female <laughs> it'll bug you at some point it'll bug you just try calling him by his name it's going to take some time. I still say God. I still say Jesus. I still say Lord. But I'm learning to call him by his name. Yahweh. So when you hear me say Yahweh. Or you hear me say Yahshua. Don't think I'm serving another God. Don't think that I'm turning going a different route in my salvation because I'm not, hallelujah. What I'm doing is recognizing the God that I serve, the one who died for me, the one who died for us, gave his life, gave it up, and then turned around and picked it up. That's who I'm calling, Yeshua. And I go before his father, which is my father, because we have communion with them. Yahweh. So with that said, I'm finished. God bless you, Sean. I'm glad to see that you're here. Love you, sweetie. 
my niece. So um, I do pray that you learn something out of this. And you too, I thank you all for listening. And I know that this is a, uh, this will be an uploaded video to YouTube, but I pray that you all got something out of it as well. And um, anything else that you want to say, sweetie? All right. Well, we got to run and look forward to next Saturday, next Sabbath Bible study teaching. And, and please uh, inform your friends and tell them, look us up, look me up and uh, send the requests. And, um, you know, I will accept the request because we want to do the will of Yahweh. I understand we're still having some technical difficulties. A friend of mine that was on stated that it was going in and out and saying that our signal is low. So I apologize. We're going to have to work on that. So if you, if you if it's hard for you to hear us going in and out, let us know that um, and give us that feedback so we can try to work on that because we want to make sure everyone is hearing uh, what we're saying. Yes. Oh, Demetrius oh. back on. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Jarita, for letting me know that. Uh, I was just telling them that to let me know when it's an issue going uh, in and out like that so we can work on it. It's something with our signal, the, the phone was saying. So and we want everybody to hear what we're saying when we are uh, doing these teachings. And we want people yes. to participate. Yes. It's a Bible study. So in Bible study, everybody participate. They, they uh, provide their comments and uh, questions, questions or whatever. So please do share, uh, mm -hmm. thumbs up, like, hearts, and all that stuff, and send us comment and feedback as well. Amen. And if it's a particular topic that you would like for us to uh, uh, talk about, let us know. Yes. So we can do some research on it and, and present that. Yes. Same with you, YouTube. You know, um, look us up on YouTube under my name, D-E-R-O-N, Darren D. Wilson. And, um, you know, uh, send a friend request on Facebook, uh, you know, and, and like I said, I will grant it. You can also um, look up on the church site on Facebook, which is Holy Hill of Zion Christian Fellowship Ministries. And um, send a friend request and I will grant that access as well. And, uh, you know, look me up on YouTube. I have some other videos that I've done, but uh, from this point, you know, I, um, I love to be sitting down with my, my beautiful wife here and going over this uh, uh, word with you all because, um, you know, she has some, some awesome insight. And um, I just appreciate her very, very much. And we truly appreciate you. We appreciate you. So uh, tell others, if you have been blessed, please share this. Tell others, because we want to win souls for Yeshua, for Yahweh. We want to win souls. And, and there's so much that's going on right now in this world that we live in. And uh, it's actually the prophecies that Christ spoke of being fulfilled. So, uh, you know, if I get an opportunity, you know, I'd love to speak on that as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, close out. Did you want to close us out with prayer? Do prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, Father Yahweh, we come before you. In the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we ask that you would uh, touch the hearts of the people that uh, visited with us and here. Father, uh, touch their hearts and... Uh, perk the uh, interest, my Father, to seek more of you and to seek you the way that you told us to, which is to, to uh, get greater understanding. Father, to uh, just dig into your word and understand what you said and what you're saying. We want to do what please you. And we ask 
that you would bless us, that you would take us to that next level, that we can see the way you see and walk the way you want us to walk, conduct yes. ourselves the way you want us yes. to conduct ourselves. Yes. It's no 